Hey guys, this is Khan here, and today in this section we will talk about binomial theorem. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this pattern over here before we actually move on to something deep. Okay, the binomial pattern for x plus y raised to 1 would be x plus y. You all agree to that? The second one is x plus y squared would be x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. You all agree to that? x plus 3 and oops x plus y raised to 3 would basically give us x raised to the third power plus 3xy plus y cubed. Let's move on to x plus y raised to the fourth power would give us x raised to the fourth plus 4x cubed y plus 4x whoops plus 6x squared y squared plus 4xy plus y raised to the fourth power. Okay? Now the last one that we'll do is x plus y raised to the fifth power would be equal to x raised to the fifth power plus 5x to the fourth power y plus 10 cube y squared plus 10x squared y cube plus 5xy raised to the fourth power. Okay, and then you have that. Okay, so what do you notice in this pattern is that it keeps going on forever and ever. Even if you disinclude the fifth pattern, which is over here, you have y cubed, y raised to the fourth, y squared, and y. So as you see, the pattern is moving on and on. Okay? Now this is the binomial theorem that we are going to talk about. Okay? This is something called Pascal scale that we can identify. Now what if we can use Pascal scale to identify this, which Basically, x plus, what if you're given this, x raised to the 12th power, okay, and we need to find the coefficient of x raised to the 7th power and y raised to the 5th power. What is the coefficient over here? Well, it's really hard to understand that, right? So, let's go ahead and use something which makes it easier for us. So, we can use something which looks like 12c to the 5th, basically means that 12 factorial that we learned in previous section, 12 minus 5 over 12 factorial. Now this basically means that 12 things are taken 5 at a time. Okay? So 12 things taken five at a time is look, looks like this. So basically what you have is this thing over here. Let me rewrite it again. Okay, so you basically have 12 factorial over 12 minus 5 factorial over 12 factorial, right? 12 minus, well, basically it's 12 over 5 factorial and then you would have basically 12 times 11 times times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times let's put it till 7 12 minus 5 basically gives up uh, 7 and then you have 12 factorial so 7 factorial and then you have 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 Okay, 7 factorial cancels out with second one, 5 cancels out with 10 by 2, 4 cancels out by 8 by 2, 2 cancels out 12 by 6, 3 cancels out 9 by 3. Okay, now all you need to have is basically this term multiplied, divided by 1 would give a 792. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through some examples 
using this property okay now it turns out that it's really easy when you use the calculator but after all you need to use the calculator for factorization to multiply a huge large amount of products on the test you need to use a calculator because it would just consume you more and more time on combinations formula okay now here we're learning the combinations formula first one basically looks like eight items taken twice at a time is how you read so eight factorial divided by eight minus two factorial divided by two factor okay so that would basically be equal eight times seven times six factorial divided by six factorial times two factorial so six factorial six factorial cancels out two factorial cancels out with eight by four so four times seven is 28 okay let's go to the second one 10 items taken three at a time so it would be 10 factorial over 10 minus 3 factorial divided by 3 factorial multiply by 3 factorial so that would be 10, min 10 times 8 9 times 8 factorial okay times 7 factorial 10 minus 3 would be 7 7 factorial times 3 factorial 7 7 cancels out 3 cancels out 9 with 3 so 10 times 3 30 times 8 okay which will give you <coughs> which will give you 120 at the end okay and if you even want to make it easier for you you can do this you have 3 factorial which basically is 3 times 2 this is in 9 3 goes into 9 3 times, 2 goes into 10, 5 times, so 5 times 3 times 8 would give you 120, which is the combination of take 10 items taken 3 at a time. Okay, now what if you have uh, 8 items taken 6 at a time? So it would be basically 8 factorial over 8 minus 6 factorial times 6 factorial, basically is 8. Um, you do it to till the end okay and you'll find out that the the answer would be 28 okay now let's go ahead and erase this and go to our next example Now it, it turns out that it's not really hard when you understand the combination of the binomial theorem. 10 items taken 7 at a time basically is like this 10 factorial divided by 10 minus 7 factorial divided by 7 factorial, okay, which would be like uh, 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times. 5 times 4 times 3 divided by 3 factorial times 7 factorial. 3 factorial cancels out with 3. Then you only have 10 times 9 times 8. 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. Okay, divided by 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. Okay, times 3 times 2. So this whole line would cancel out with these things. 4 will cancel out with 4. 3 will cancel out 9 with 3. 2 will cancel out 8 by 4. Okay, so now you have 10 times 3, 30. 30 times 4 would be 120. You can easily figure out these things. Okay, so we, we talked about, we started our section with giving you, uh, me giving you, the binomial theorem, right? So let's go ahead and talk about the binomial theorem. And I also mentioned in this section that binomial theorem is useful if you use Pascal's triangle, right? So let's look at a let's look at Pascal triangle and how what Pascal triangle is.
Okay, so let's go ahead and change marker to blue here. So the Pascal triangles basically has one, 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 two, whoops. You can go on internet and find a better Pascal triangle. This is just a rough uh, Pascal triangle I'm drawing over here. Okay. Okay. One. 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. Now what's happening is that, I want to tell you guys what's happening here, is that when you add these two numbers, you get this product. When you add these two numbers, you get this number. When you add these two numbers, you get this product. When you add these two numbers, you get this product. You yeah, have these two products, you get these numbers. Same goes over here. It's basically this way. Whoops. You yeah, add these two numbers, you get this one. Okay? So when you add these two numbers, you get this product. When you add these two numbers, you get this product. When you add these two products, you get this number. When you add these two products, you get this number. When you add these two products, you get this number. When you get 5 to 10, 15, 10 to 10, 20, 10 to 5, 15, 5 to 1, 6, and 1 to nothing, 1. Okay? So you see the pattern where it's going because it's a Pascal triangle over here. Okay? Now, what this basically means is that if we have something that looks like x plus y raised to the fifth power, we go to the fifth row, which is first, second, third, fourth and fifth. So the first one would be x raised to the fifth power plus the, the coefficients uh, are present in the Pascal triangle over here so we don't need to worry about where do we get the coefficients from. Okay? Like if we had something that says x plus y raised to the second power we would have x squared plus 2xy okay x squared Plus 2, which comes from Pascal triangle right here, plus y squared. The coefficients are this over here. Then you have something basically 3x and so on, as we discussed in our. Thank you for watching. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter.